turn to Colossians, chapter 1. Hallelujah. I like, I like Colossians. You could, you could stay in there for a month <laughs> and really never, you know, there's so much to glean from there. Hallelujah. And I was thinking today as I was reading this and I was thinking of Paul, the apostle. And, you know, he was writing it. Well, I mean, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament, maybe more than that. I don't know. I never figured it all out. <laughs> but you know that, that he wrote a lot. And when he was writing, it, I mean, you know, a lot of was just letters. They were letters. That's all. He never know, knew that it was going to be the New Testament, you know, and that we were going to live our lives by it. And he, and he had to experience so many things to go through that to get this revelation. You know, it didn't just drop out of the sky. Hit 13 years out in the desert, you know, downloading. <laughs> And you know, when he didn't he said he never even conversed with flesh and blood. He never had nobody to call. We all we all got somebody to call, at least. <laughs> we got a church we can come to. Yep. You know? And not only that, I mean like he was writing the word and he was building up the people. He said he it was like he was he was pregnant with the with the church. And, and the, you know, he, was, he, he just wanted the people to, to believe and to have faith and not to let it go, you know? So here, um, we're going to get over here in, in just a minute, but in verse 29 in chapter 1, to, he says in verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. Now, when he said that to them, did they, what did they do? You never heard that before. And somebody said, Christ is living in you. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a supernatural thing. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Christ came to live in you. He didn't just come to have a visit. You said, Jesus, come into my life. And he took you for what you said. He came into your life. And then he, in the inside of you. Now we have this word of God. We have this word of God. So, I mean, you know, it's pretty, okay, yeah, you, okay, yeah, I'll accept Jesus. And now I have Christ in me. And, and it's believable. It's believable. But I don't know. When that was first said, you know, he had the, he had the revelation to, over in Galatians. Just uh, put your finger in there because we're going to come back. In Galatians uh, 2. A few little pages back. <laughs> My pages are stuck together. <laughs> Colossians, Ephesians. Okay, Galatians 2. And verse 20. It's going to be up on the screen. Galatians 2 and verse 20, or you can read it out of your King James Bible if you want to. Is it going to be up there? No, yes, there it is. Okay, so I want you all to read it together. One, two, three. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, like, I'm not living in this body. <laughs> I am, carnally. But spiritually, Jesus is in me. He's alive in me. And if I allow him, <laughs> that's all we need to do, is to allow Christ 
to live in us. That means everything you come up against that is a problem or it looks like, oh, how am I ever going to get out of this? Or, you know, how is this ever going to get fixed? We usually just go about and start fixing it ourselves. Do what we can do. Amen. How many of you ever done that? How did it work out for you? <laughs> because see, what we were when we came, when we were, we were dead. Before we accepted Christ, we were dead in this world. We were, we didn't, our spirits weren't alive. But we had the devil speaking to us a lot. We had other people speaking to us a lot. We had circumstances around us. And it doesn't matter if it was yesterday or 2,000 years ago. Right? It doesn't matter. It's the same. You're dead. You were dead. <laughs> and the only way you could come to life <laughs> was say, Jesus, come into my life. And I've said this before. That that moment, it was like you, I was crucified. I was crucified with Christ. And when I said, Jesus, come into my heart, poof, out I came from the grave, <laughs> alive. With resurrection life. Do you all know what resurrection life is? Resurrection life is all the promises of God in the Bible. Yes and amen. And it is your ticket to eternal life forever and forever and forever. See, God has made the way where there was no way. There was no other way. There's still no other way. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of other gods and stuff out there and religions that people think, no, how can you say it's your way? Because I know it's my way. <laughs> I am fully persuaded, fully persuaded. And that Jesus, I mean, you know, even before the foundation of the world, before he was crucified, before he came into the earth as a human being, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit said, okay, before the foundation of the earth, you know, we've got all these, we're going to get these people and we're going to build a family, the family of God, the body of Christ. You know, and I think somewhere in the, in the scheme of things, we get caught up with the carnal stuff that's going on in our lives and just trying to catch up with everything, you know, and we lose sight of that most important thing. See, I'd rather be on this earth with absolutely nothing at all than to be, you know, I, wouldn't, I couldn't be without Christ in my life. Can you, can you say amen to that? Amen. You know, and I'm not trying to, I don't know. I guess, I guess when I look at the body of Christ and I look at what is going on in the earth today and all the, you know, the wars and the, you know, and the things that are happening and governments and, and it just seems, it almost seems like you can't even, can't even look at that, no. you know, but you know what? We have the power. Yeah. Good. We have the authority because we're seated in Christ in heavenly places. So not only did you raise from the dead, but your resurrection life is seated at the right hand of God. And everything that Jesus is, we are. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You know, but we haven't been used to We've been used to this kind of setting, you know. This is where we're Christians, right here in church. <laughs> no, this is the filling station right here. Hallelujah. So we can go out there. Out there. Mm -hmm. God has people yes. to come to us. Amen. You ask Pastor Shirley, I mean, how many people have been coming to her, even at work, you know? She's trying to sit there and read her Bible. <laughs> Somebody's walking up to her, you know. Is that a Bible? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, and when you're out in your swimming class or wherever you are, you're always, you're always sharing the gospel. And I know you are. I'm preaching to the choir, but it feels good. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, <laughs> I always feel like I'm never doing enough. You know what I mean? 
And so, you know, you got to get into that place with God. You got to get into that place, you know, because if you're, and, and with your brothers and sisters and encouraging one another and building each other up, you know, I know we don't go around talking to each other and telling them, well, it happened to me, or I got this, like I'm sick, or whatever. We don't like to do that. But that's what we're here for, to help one another, amen, to pray for one another, encourage one another, make each other laugh, <laughs> have a good time. We're supposed to be the happiest people on earth, amen? Amen. Anyway, I'm, I'm just trying to help you be the happiest people on okay. earth. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I need a boost. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I'll, I'll look at you then when I'm preaching. Oh, praise God. <laughs> okay, so we're starting in chapter one now. Uh, not Galatians. No, we're going back over to, uh, to uh, Colossians. Yeah, over to Colossians. Okay. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother. To the saints, okay, he's talking to you, okay, he's writing to you tonight. This letter was written to you. Anybody in here not a saint? <laughs> to the saints and faithful, and I know you're faithful because you're here tonight. Well, I'm talking to the people online, too. I know you had reasons you couldn't get here, but that's all right. We love you. <laughs> you can get encouraged, too. Which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Oh, wow. What a good thing to get, right? A letter that says we're praying always for you. Doesn't it feel good when someone says they're praying for you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doeth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant who is for you, a faithful minister of Christ. See, what a thing. I mean, you know, he can say that. He can say that about you. Say, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Wow, that is some prayer. Amen? Amen? I mean, that's really full. He's not just spouting it off. I mean, he really has this in his heart that he's praying this over the saints, and this is going to be coming to pass. So he's praying this over you guys, okay? Me too. <laughs> that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Oh, my gosh. The knowledge of his will. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. How would you like to be fruitful? Whatever you lay your hands to, you're fruitful. You're getting a harvest. You're building the kingdom is what you're doing. Amen? Increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might. Whew, come on now. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. That's his glorious power. So when you're in bed tomorrow and you're like, oh, I don't want to get up, 
Uh-uh. God's glorious might is strengthening me right now. I can do it. I can, I know it's the winter blahs, you know, and it's, <laughs> you look out and it's 18 below zero. <laughs> Who wants to get out of bed? <laughs> but if you just take a moment, I mean, just read this and just, you know, just let it come on you. Let it, let it build you, right? Let, let that strength of the strength of God come on you. According to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Who has now this is a really good verse here because this is this is where everything changed. Everything changed in your life from this verse. Verse 13. I can hardly read it. I got it so underlined and circled and everything <laughs> written in margins and all that. <laughs> Who has delivered us? Let's say it together. Come on. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay. Come on. That's the only verse you know in the Bible? <laughs> then know it. You've been delivered from the power of darkness. You've been delivered from everything the devil has to offer. But sometimes, you know, the enemy comes and blindsides us. We don't know. We're going along and we're doing everything, we, you know, we know how to do and whatever. And sometimes, you know, something can come and trip us up and deceive us into believing that, you know, God is not for me. He's not. If it was for me, why would, I be, why would this be happening to me? I'm sure every minister on the face of the earth... <laughs> Have you ever said that? Come on now, be honest. I've said it. Anybody else going to be honest? Yeah, yeah. You don't understand? Why me? What did I ever do to tick you off, God? <laughs> well, I mean, God doesn't have that. He doesn't do that stuff. We allow that stuff to come in. And sometimes we don't realize what we're doing. Right? So we have to go back to that verse and said, I've been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Into the kingdom of light. And so when you realize it, when you realize it, okay, yeah, it's fair. I mean, we're only, we're human. But we're human divine. And we have power on the inside of us because it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that's for you, not just for, you know, whoever you're believing God for or praying for or whatever. It's for you because you got to be, you got to be right. You know, you got to get right. I mean, you are right. You're the righteousness of God in Christ, but you, you know what I mean? You have to, you have to get all this, the ducks lined up. <laughs> I mean, it is possible, but it's a constant because especially these days in this world, the way, you know, things that are going on in the world, there's so much spiritual darkness out there. And, you know, it's our responsibility to pray, to push that back. And like, and it's not only just, you know, to get into spiritual warfare, but you know what? My weapon is a melody. Right? What does that say? That means praising the Lord pushes back. The darkness. Yeah. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Is pushing back the darkness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't have to pick up a gun. You don't have to, you know, and that's for somebody. That's, you know, some people have that call in their lives to, you know, to join the military or whatever and go, you know, fight the battle. Whatever it is God has called you to do, there is going to be a fight. Because the enemy, just like he's after Israel, if you look at Israel, you know, they're after Israel. Why? <laughs> you know, you wonder, why? <laughs> because it's God's 
It belongs to God. And you can read it. You're reading through the Bible. I mean, it's funny that you're reading through it and you can see, huh, it's still going on today. Same old story. You know, God has got a plan. He has a plan. And in his mercy and grace, he's, he's just like he said, like the days of Noah. He, he, he had to spend, Noah had to spend so much time building the ark that it gave the people time to change their minds, but they didn't. They didn't. Only Noah's family, you know, so, you know, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You're doing what God told you to do. He did what God told him to do. To be, They didn't even ever see rain before. They didn't know, you know, what that was going to be like. I remember sitting in a um, place down in, uh, it's not in Oral Roberts University, but it's down there in Tulsa. You know where that where that ark was, where we went in. Remember, and we looked at the ark, and you actually went through. You got onto this ark, right? You know, and they had it all very dramatized, and you know it was moved. The doors were shut, and then it was moving back and forth. You know, and, and you could hear the people. It was just sound, you know, recorded sound, but you could hear the people banging, and banging, and trying to get in. The doors were shut. It was too late. It was too late. We don't want to be too late. No. We want to be there. We want to be ready, you know. When the rapture happens, we're ready. <laughs> if you want to do it tonight, that's fine. I'm here, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> You're all ready, too. I know you are. Okay, so he's delivered us into the kingdom of his, his son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. See, that was the thing that was keeping us out, was the sin, because, you know, we couldn't, they weren't making, uh, you know, uh, sacrifices anymore, so they didn't have that you know, nothing to take away the sin. So this was the redemption that Jesus hung on the cross for us. For us. Right? So we could raise from the dead and do what we were called to do. That gave us the grace to have an understanding of that. It gives us the grace to go and say, oh, it's too hard, you know, no, nope, no, nope. Jesus did it. Jesus hung on the cross for me. He was buried. He rose again, and I rose with him, and I have resurrection life on the inside of me that gives me the grace I need. I mean, any of us, what we're doing right now, I mean, we'd never do it without the grace of God. Amen? If we were left on, into our own, you know, <laughs> what a demise it would be. <laughs> Our own carnal way of thinking. <laughs> but you know what? People do. They live, they live a carnal life and not really realizing, you know, who they are, what they have, and what they can do. You're powerful people. You have that power on the inside of you. The, all the power, all the power, that's in Ephesians 1. Five different kinds of power. It took all the power of heaven to raise Jesus from the grave. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. What about that power? Well, Come on, say it. Well, dwells in us. Well, what does that mean? It dwells in us. Is it just sitting there? Just like, are we doing anything with it? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, yeah. are you waiting and looking for opportunities for that power to be activated? Even if it's home in your own house. Yeah. They'll be praying and taking authority over them for your kids, for your husbands and wives. I mean, just, you know, pray for each other. 
Get a list of people who are in this church and pray for them every day. They should be here tonight. For some reason or other, they're not. Right? And so if, it's, if we're not praying, <laughs> then, you know, what are we doing? Christianity is supernatural. It's not something that just happens and we come to church and we get built up and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? There's so much more. There's so much more. And in these last days, these are the last days, I guess, you know, I mean, they've been saying that since 2,000 years ago. <laughs> the Apostle Paul was saying this is the last days. Well, they are. <laughs> Whatever place it is, whether it's tomorrow or 20 years or 30 years, you know, they've had a lot of, they have had a lot. But I mean, there's so much going on in the world. I don't know how much the world can take. It looks like it's being you know, broken down. But, but there's still, I mean, I believe there's supposed to be seven years of plenty before the rapture. Just like in Joseph's time, they had the seven years of plenty before, you know, before things happen. Because we have to come back too, you know. <laughs> They're back. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be rejoicing and having parties. They're gone. They're gone. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm -mm. We are coming back. This is not the end. We have the millennial reign coming. We're ruling and reigning. I mean, with Jesus physically. It's going to be exciting. But some of the stuff that we need to know, we're learning now. We're learning it now. I don't know too many churches. I mean, I don't know what they're teaching out in the other churches. If they teach the word of faith or, you know, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's just all you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the bottom line there. But then to live for him, you know, to serve him and to, you know, to be in the body of Christ, you need that. You need the word to be activated in you. Your mind needs to be renewed. Our old way of thinking is no good. Filthy rags, our own righteousness. Yeah. Well, I think that'll be good. You know, I think I'll do that. No, don't do that. I think I'll go over here, you know, and do this. No, don't do that unless God is telling you to, unless you get a word from God. Stay put. <laughs> You know, don't be led about by emotions or anything, how you feel. Because, you know, you can be, you can get pretty sick and, you know, get off track, so to speak. Anybody ever been off track? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Y'all got back on again, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But you know, um, okay, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Wow. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. He is the head of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not out there, you know, swarming around headless. It's the body of Christ. He's the head. He's the head. Who is the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. 
And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. There's no question. No question about it. You are reconciled. So you should look happier. (laughs) Man, I'll tell you what. This is better than any lottery. Because that reconciled is forever and forever and forever. There's no end now. You're in the body of Christ. The head of the church is Jesus Christ. And we have access. Say, I have access to the throne room of God for anything I need in any time of need. And even when you don't need anything, don't go to the throne room only when you need something. Come on now. That's what we do. I'm guilty too. I do it more so when I need something than when I don't. If everything is fine, you know, the kids are good, I got money in the bank, groceries in the cupboard, they were well, you know. What makes you what makes you want to go into the throne room when you got everything? Gloria Copeland said that. She said, the hardest time I found to serve God wasn't when I didn't have anything. Because when I didn't have anything, I had to be in his face. And then I got everything. Everything came over the years. Things came, you know, they had the money they needed. They built a beautiful house they needed and all the church and the ministry and everything, you know, was just, woo. They were supporting other ministries and things were looking good. But now she's having a health battle and all the money and all the houses and everything else that requires uh, maintenance. (laughs) See, stuff that you have, big houses require maintenance. So make sure if you're getting the money, you got enough money to hire staff (laughs) to look after your stuff. Right? (laughs) And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Oh, that was the joy. See, that was the joy that was set before him. You were the joy that was set before him. He pay, and I mean, oh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, you can't even think about what happened with him. And then, oh my, who was at the cross? Who was there? Who was there? Hardly anybody. John and his mother. You know, like, that was kind of sad. And then there was only 120 in the upper room after. But see, it didn't matter because then it was done. It is finished. It is done. The blood of Jesus has overcome. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. You hung on the cross. There's a microphone right there. Do you want to tell that story? No. No, but I don't mind. I'm giving you permission. <laughs> no, it's a really good story. I remember that story. I looked and saw the hammer in my hand. It was my sin that put him there. And it reminds me of uh, Habakkuk 2 and verse 14. You know, a flood came and wiped everybody out. But he said in Habakkuk 2.14, there's a flood coming. My glory is going to cover the earth, just like Noah's waters covered the sea. The biggest revival that's ever about to hit planet earth is here. And for some reason, he postured us to be here when it happens. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's in a, we're here in a very important time yes. in, the, in, in the world. Amen. You know, and so that's why you just can't put anything before God. 
I mean, I know we've always lived that way, but right now I just feel it's the it's an important time to have fellowship, not just relationship. We have relationship because Jesus went to the cross, but that fellowship with God, Alpine, face to face, times of refreshing in the face of God. Those are important things. And I'm not talking about just when we come to church. It's wonderful when we have people here, you know, with, you know, can sing and play the musical instruments and build us up. You know, that builds us up. They don't know what they do for us. You know. Thank you, Ashton. Yes, Ashton. Thank you, Thank you Pastor Paul. Thank you, Jordan. Yes. Faithful. Yes. You know, I mean, I can say I'm disappointed there's not more people here, and I don't know why people are not here. I didn't tell anybody I was speaking. <laughs> so I can't be can't feel bad about that. You know, but I mean sometimes that happens. Maybe you're the only ones who needed to hear this. So now you're a responsible. <laughs> you guys are responsible now. You've heard it. You've heard it. Amen. Yeah. I know that you're all I know you're all built up in the spirit. I am I am so happy with everybody here in this church, I must say. You know, we keep strife out. We have aught against nobody. We we can't. We can't even call ourselves a Christian if we have something against somebody. You know? But I mean, I see you all hugging and kissing on Sunday mornings and Thursday nights. Nobody wants to go home. <laughs> and I know when I, we weren't coming uh, regularly, yeah, we missed it. Oh, my gosh. It's not the same watching it on TV, although we were very happy to be able to. And, you know, but it's okay. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about something I heard today. Did I hear it today? I don't know. <laughs> maybe yesterday but sometimes the things that come into our lives that we have no explanation for and we wonder what are you know what's happening lord why is this happening what did i do did i do something wrong did i let something into my life that i shouldn't have well those are all normal questions but we shouldn't go on a witch hunt on ourselves you know, we should just ask God, okay, Holy Spirit, show us, show us, show me what we did or what's happening here. And for the most part, it's just the devil. I mean, I know Pastor Paul had stuff with his kids. I had stuff with my kids. You had stuff with your husband and maybe your kids too. I don't know. You know, I mean, we all have things that are, we have no control over, Right. But it just comes bang, 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 bang. There's no let up. But we cannot, we cannot let it. We could be pressed on every side, but don't let us t let it take you down. Don't say, I quit. It's easy to say, I quit. But you're not allowed to quit. <laughs> we, we have work to do. Not only now, but in the millennium, we have to, you know. We have to at least get to heaven. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, well, you know. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. Oh, that devil, he's sneaky. So we bind him now in the name of Jesus from our congregation, from the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. You've given us authority over all the works of the enemy, and nothing, say nothing, nothing. shall by any means hurt us. We have everything we need. We, we, we pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. I, I say pray in the Spirit more than ever. I'm talking to myself as well. Sometimes I get lazy. <laughs> But, you know, it's like it's on the go. Pray on the go. If you have to pray on the go, pray on the go. It's nice if you could get in your little closet and stay there with the Lord. And if you can do that, do that. But sometimes we just don't have it. You get into the habit of just praying all the time. I'll pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing and be thankful. 
Those are three things that keep you, right? Because you can't be mad at anybody when you're rejoicing. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think it's wonderful. Our daughter's living with us, you know, and she comes, she's giving me scriptures and she's giving me podcasts to listen to. And, you know, I mean, I got my own stuff to listen to, but she'll ask me in the morning, did you listen to that podcast I gave you? (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't half bad. I mean, you know, it was good, positive, but and it had scriptures and it had mentioned God and all that kind of thing. It's not what I'm used to listening to, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to honor her. I'm going to honor her and listen to it. I can cut off anything that's not good, but I didn't hear anything that wasn't good, you know. God is always trying to get to us. He's got, he's got all of heaven to pour out on you. And all the spiritual blessings that are in heaven, ha, 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 they're mine. <laughs> they're yours? Yeah. So stay happy. <laughs> we hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.